Well, thank you very much, Fernando. Um, it's uh, great to have the province provide us with a brief overview on the servicing strategy going forward. And um, it's a very exciting pro uh, project. And as uh, Fernando mentioned, it is um, really part of the regional growth and servicing plan that the metro region has been working on since 2019. And we really appreciate the progress being done on the servicing strategy. We all know it's uh, desperately needed. And um, again, I'd just like to thank you all for attending today's workshop digging into plan 2050 workshop. And um, before we get started on the workshop, um, I just wanted to mention how important it is to have everybody here and have everybody's feedback. Um, and as we mentioned um, in you know at all of the workshops, developing the first regional plan really provides us something to start to comment on, something to make better and refine. And that's really what we're hoping this series of workshops has, has been. Um, at the last workshop we had, workshop number three, um, a few people um, had asked that they have a, you know, a larger opportunity, another opportunity to just have some free-flowing conversation, to ask some questions, to explore um, some of the areas. And so um, we hope we've created a space for these conversations today. Um, you'll notice that there's stations around the room, um, starting from one in the corner here and ending in five, and we'll guide you through, so it'll be really simple. And um, at each of those stations, there's some conversations and some questions we're hoping to get input and feedback from you on, because these are some of the areas that continue to um, receive the most comments and questions, and your input is really gonna be important in these areas as we take all of the information we received over the last four sessions and all the information from the portal and other uh, stakeholders who have provided us with comment and start to refine it, review it, and start to get to plan to uh, draft 2.0, plan 2050. So, um, and as you know, if you have any additional comments, and I'll talk about this at the end, uh, you know, after today, the website has been open and is available for any comments. You also can reach out to any one of us with your comments, your questions, your concerns, and provide it to us. We really want to hear from you. So, so the opportunity is there at your convenience and how you would like to be engaged. And so before we really get to today, I just wanted to give us a quick, you know, as uh, you know, Lynette the Clown used to say, a 60 second tidy on kind of where we are. Like, how did we get here? Where are we? Fernando gave us a really great kind of chronology of, of how we ended up at having the RFP for regional servicing strategy. But I really wanted to just give a quick update on Plan 2050. Just, you know, it's gonna be very brief, but just so you can kind of see the story in its entirety. So. We know it's a long time coming. I don't think I have to tell anybody here, for, for most of us in this room, it feels like it's been forever. But it was first contemplated in 1998. And the goal in 1998 was the exact same as it is today, to align the Winnipeg metropolitan region with other metro regions across North America who have organized, they've aligned their policy direction and their processes to ensure that they are open for business. They don't just say they're open for business, they are open. Plan 2050 sets the foundation to keep, up, to keep up and to surpass other regions in attracting investment, while providing confidence for those who are already here to expand and continue to invest in our province. Many communities in our region, when we started this process years ago, they had a really good handle on their local perspectives, but they had very little information on what was going on beside them. Planning in one community at a time in our metropolitan region today has left us with 106 economic development strategies, plans, and documents, 56 fire halls, 25 municipally owned solid waste disposal sites, 92 different land use designations, 14 climate plans, and 295 recreational facilities. Many of them, I don't have to tell you, are in need of upgrades. They're in need of retrofits, and these are expensive. We have three times more residential land and four times more employment land set aside right now in our development plans that we're gonna to need to accommodate growth to 2050, and we have no plan to prioritize services and infrastructure to get these markets ready, to get this land ready for market. Greg Wassmendorf joined us in session two, and he provided us with comment. He provided us again with clear direction on moving forward. By 2050, 
Winnipeg metropolitan region is expected to grow to 1.1 million residents with the potential to add 200,000 people and 140,000 jobs. To do this, we will require more housing, more jobs to support this increase in population. Economic growth spurs population growth. It's not the other way around. And I don't think I have to tell anybody here of the national conversation on housing, on housing shortages, on making sure housing affordability is really, the, has to be the objective and goal of every level of government today. In 2019, the Winnipeg Metropolitan Region was tasked by the province to begin drafting a regional plan, Plan 2050. You'll recall in 2019, the board engaged Dr. Robert Murray, who is a leader in regional thinking and planning. Dr. Murray provided us with clear direction on how we move from where we were to get a solid and competitive regional plan. His report, for the benefit of all, provided us with a roadmap. Our first Plan 2050 consultations was with the WMR board. It happened on December the 6th, 2019. This is where the board affirmed the guiding principles of Plan 2050. These guiding principles were the same guiding principles with a few modifications that guided the growth strategy that started in 2016. This was the first step in the planning process, was the creation of that growth strategy, was, plan, was securing our future. That was the precursor to Plan 2050. And the board released the precursor in 2016. This strategy document identified key priorities and actions for the region, which forms the basis of Plan 2050. And the picture here, if you want to take a quick look at the picture, shows all of the board members where they signed the Securing Our Future document, which was an agreement to work together. It was an agreement to build a competitive, resilient, sustainable metropolitan region for all. It was a, an agreement on how they were going to do this and how they were going to develop the first plan. I hope many of you noticed the boards in the lobby when you walked in the door. This is where we started. This is where the WMR board started in 2016, guiding the conversation. Those boards were directed from, out, from input from securing our future, and the boards continue to hold all of the sticky notes and comments that you put on on December 6, 2019. Adding to those sticky notes and comments was what other folks it, uh, put on through all of the planning processes we had in the region over the years. Plan 2050 team, as Scott had called them out today, was selectively chosen from experts across Canada and the globe. Experts in the regional planning field, experts in areas that securing our future identified, experts in the areas that Plan 2050 is attempting to look at to guide policy direction on, to build collaboration around. As you can appreciate, regional plans have a broad array of stakeholders. These stakeholders span many different areas of our community. We took extent, we had extensive consultations with board members, with elected officials, with councillors, with CAOs, with administrators, with plannings, with planning districts, with indigenous communities, with provincial departments, all provincial departments, business, industry, we had regional stakeholders and we had community groups. In February 2020, these stakeholders in this room provided some of the first policy direction for Plan 2050 and it added to the, what the Winnipeg Metropolitan Region Board said on December the 6th, 2019. This extensive engagement has been part of the planning process and it produced Plan 2050. Draft Plan 2050, as you know, was submitted to the Municipal Minister of Municipal Relations on 2011 as a draft plan, along with 675 pages of input and documentation from those stakeholders that we consulted on the plan. Since Plan 2050 was submitted, 
We've been working with this regional draft plan, the first draft, to get to 2.0. To do this, we undertook a series of workshops to dig in where we needed input, where questions could be addressed and more, more analysis could be had. Workshop number one, we focused on the regional structure and policy area number one and policy area number five. In this workshop, we reviewed how Plan 2050 could be applied across a variety of communities in various shapes and various sizes and, and unique characteristics. Hazel Boris walked us through some examples from our region and examples of her work across North America and the world. In workshop two, we focused on policy area one, policy area two, and policy area five. We heard from Greg Wasmador. He was a top site selector and he underscored again. He was here in 2015. He's talked to us again about it in 2019. Again, he underscored the need that we need to do more, we need to move from land to building sites. And he provided us with his top eight list to build a strong, competitive, and prosperous Winnipeg metropolitan region. Hazel Boris, again, she provided us with key concepts related to employment and building a strong regional economy. Workshop three, we focused on policy areas three, four, and five. We explored how a regional approach to planning, investment, and servicing can allow us to meet the very real and very immediate needs of a changing climate and create the conditions if we are going to protect, restore, and enhance our water, our land, and our natural resources while keeping up with new technologies, new economy, and reconciliation with Indigenous nations and Indigenous communities. We heard from Bob Sanford, who reiterated these concepts and the urgent timeline before us. We also heard from Sophie Hendrick from Metabolic in the Netherlands, who has provided us with input and insight into water, into historic governance models, and into the need to engage and jump onto the circular economy ideas and concepts. Hazel Boris, took Sophie and Bob's comments, and she talked about how we could bring those examples closer to home in our region through land use planning, through policy direction, through working together to manage these precious resources. So today, we've set up five stations around the room. Each station has an underlying topic, and we'll have a facilitator to guide you. And each station has a series of questions that'll be posed to you as we're looking to dig into and get a little bit more insight on the different policy areas. To help navigate these policy areas, we've grouped municipalities together and we've changed it up a bit so that you have the opportunity to have new conversations with municipalities you might not have been sitting with in the clusters we've had over the last three, over the last three um, workshops. And you'll have about 20 minutes in each session and we'll lead you through that. But before we get started, I just wanted to share with you where I was this weekend. So this weekend, I was at a event on Saturday, full day, an event on the climate, what's happening with climate change, what's happening with extreme events, and how the arts community and the NGO community and the large foundations across Canada, I was with the Trudeau Foundation, are absolutely figuring out how are they gonna work to jump on and address this urgent situation that's before us. And I don't think I have to tell anybody with three Colorado lows and three weeks in this room that we've got some changes. That's what I did on Saturday. So I came out of there a little bit, a little bit sad because it is a big deal. But Sunday, I picked up a copy of the regional plan. That's what kind of a loser I am on Sunday. I reread the regional plan because I thought, wow, look, I'm just gonna reread it again with new eyes. And you know, I felt incredibly hopeful after looking at it. It's hard. It's tough. There's a lot of things in that plan that are uncomfortable. But you know what? I felt hopeful after I read that plan. I thought together there was collaborative efforts. There was attention to detail. There was reconciliation. There was climate change. There was amazing uh, uh, you know, policy that could lead us to communities of the future, communities that will attract the kind of jobs and the economy we need to ensure that we are being sustainable and we are gonna you know, have that community for the future. 
I felt, I read that plan and I thought if we could actually do that, what a legacy for this incredible board that's been through the ringer on this plan. But also, my kids might not have to move away to get jobs if we can actually make our region as sustainable and as complete as this plan calls us to do. So with that in mind, I thank you for being here today. I thank you for the hard work because I know it's not easy. And I'm gonna now um, invite you to grab another cup of coffee and let's get started on digging into Plan 2050. Thank you.